Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this session is all about the services, the different services provided by the uh, user datagram protocol. User datagram protocol is one of the transport layer protocol. So let us see what are the services provided by the transport, this particular transport layer protocol. Now let us see the different points. The first one in the list we have written, yeah, this can be a feature or service anything. The UDP is a connection less protocol. Fine, UDP is a connection less protocol. This is one of the feature you can tell or the services. So connection less is there is no connection established between the sender and the receiver. If this is the sender and if this is the receiver, now the sender is trying to send what the data to the receiver. Fine. Directly it starts sending the data. It is not going to establish a connection. Whereas in connection oriented, when you see the other protocol next in the list, first a connection is established. Okay. It is simply like if I have to communicate with anyone or if I want to send a message to anyone, <coughs> first I will try to find out whether my <coughs> whether the other person is also interested in receiving my message, isn't it? Or the other person is ready to communicate with me. So first I will try to establish the connection by saying hi, hello, how are you? Then I will tell the exact uh, message or the exact uh, uh, conversation which I wanted to tell to the other person. After that also, after I end my conver conversation, I will never end abruptly. No, that is what normally we also do. Can we end anything which we are talking abruptly? At the end, we will try to say bye bye, take care, good night, whatever are the so these kind of uh, sentences we use at the end. In the beginning, we use hi, hello, how are you, good morning. So this hi, hello, how are you, good morning becomes like connection establishment. Fine. At the end, after the conversation, whatever we say bye bye, take care, good night, that becomes connection termination. So this connection establishment and connection termination is not existing, not existing or not supported by the UDP. It simply start conversing here, okay, without saying hi, hello. So this is how it simply starts sending the message. We say it is a connectionless protocol. It starts sending the message directly to the destination, fine. So this is later we will see what are the advantages, whether connection less is advantages or connection oriented is advantages. So all those things I will be telling when I try to compare these two protocols. First at this point you try to remember it is a connectionless protocol. And also one more point I want to write. It is not a reliable protocol. Not a reliable protocol. It is not a reliable protocol. So reliability is one of the important aspect here in communication. Definitely when I send something to the other person, okay, as a gift or anything, I want the assurance that yes, the gift has reached to the other person. Okay, I want the assurance that yes, it is safely and securely reach the other party. So this protocol is not a reliable protocol. If the message that is sent from the sender to the receiver is lost anywhere in the transmission, UDP does not care about that. It will never inform the sender about the lo that loss of the message, loss of the packet, loss of the user datagram. So that is why we say it is a unreliable protocol. Next we have the difference in the list, the flow control. Flow control in the transport layer introduction, I have very clearly told you that the receiver should process the data at the same rate at which the sender is sending the data, isn't it? Otherwise, what will happen is there will be overflow of packets at the receiver side. So in order to solve that problem, there should be a flow control mechanism involved in the in, in between these two entities. But UDP does not support flow control. There is no flow control mechanism in the UDP protocol. Error control, it does not support Okay. No errors are getting reported to the sender. If a message is lost, it is not informed to the sender. If a message is resent, whether it is a duplicate message, you duplicate user datagram, the sender does not know. The UDP protocol is not bothered about this errors to get reported to the sender side. Then checksum, I have completely talked about checksum in detail when I have taught about the checksum field in the previous session. So the same is applicable here. It is like a service only, it is calculating, it is what? It is providing the checksum calculation, but definitely it is not mandatory also. Congestion control, what about congestion control in UDP? 
the network components the in between components between the sender and the receiver that is the routers should also process the packets at the rate at which the sender is sending otherwise it will lead to congestion in the network udp does not support congestion it assumes that the packets are small and it is not going to give a more waiting time at the routers okay or the packets are not getting even queued up okay for processing that's the reason it does not support the uh, congestion control now look here these things flow control error control congestion control or and it, it is not a reliable protocol these are the uh, services which are not provided by the udp but still udp is a very popular protocol so the main reason for using udp is for the short messages where speed is the speed is of prime importance see when there there are short messages there is no connection also establishment and connection termination phase involved normally for any message to send first connection establishment connection is termination is there okay that means you are slowing the speed also for those messages but in case of udp what is happening is since it is a connectionless protocol the messages are also small up to maximum of 65507 bytes only so it can it can get transmitted it at a very faster speed so it is mainly used for streaming of media or you can say in computer games so this protocol is popularly used and definitely it will help also see normally you if you try to think of reliability then you are losing speed we want in some applications speed as the most important criteria so that time we can take use of this udp protocol you should not spend it is simply like see uh, in connection establishment and connection phase how much is the bandwidth uh, wasted if i have to give you an analogy suppose if you are ordering anything from amazon the item price is lesser than the delivery price let us assume the item is costing 100 but the delivery charges are 200 will you prefer that definitely not so that is how here also the message is small but to send that message udp should first send signals for uh, connection establishment then after sending the message also it should uh, exchange messages for connection termination that will also consume bandwidth that's the reason even though it is a connectionless protocol it is quite helpful here that's the reason it is a po popular protocol udp then the other process to process communication multiplexing encapsulation and decapsulation these three okay uh, will be definitely provided by any transport layer protocol and these three explain uh, the points for these three the explanation for these three services remain same whatever i have explained for the transport layer services so just uh, i can give you once again very briefly about this process to process commun communication sender is here receiver is here application layer at the sender side processes are there application layer at the receiver side processes are there so one process from the sender wants to communicate with another process at the receiver side that is why we say process to process communication it is possible with port numbers mixing and de let me tell you about multiplexing and demultiplexing with uh, the same type of example whatever i gave one il sender receiver now what will happen in multiplexing is the messages from different processes are taken by the transport layer okay so when we see this uh, the different messages that, that means the messages are many but the entity is one here only there is one transport layer which is taking the messages from the different processes at the application layer so it is like many to one many to one is called as multiplexing and at the receiver side what will happen is the transport layer will send those messages to the different processes that are running at the application layer so here it is what one to many transport layer is one but it is sending to many different processes the messages so that's why it is called as demultiplexing the third one is encapsulation and decapsulation that is there even uh, for any transport layer or for any protocol you can see this is the transport layer fine here is the application layer encapsulation and decapsulation so i'll show you both at the sender side and the uh receiver side this concept application transport layer fine this let it be at the sender and application and transport layer at the receiver this at the receiver side so now you look here encapsulation and decapsulation 
for transport layer when it is sending when it is the messages from the processes come here the transport layer at the sender what it does is it will take the message fine it will take the message and it will add its header part header of now in this case it is header of what udp the protocol used is what udp here so it will add its header this will be the message that has come so we call it as the data or the payload that is collected from the process it will add it header we say this is encapsulation encapsulation is done at the sender side now what will happen at the receiver side the same message the transport layer at the transport layer this header will be removed fine only the message will be sent to the application removing the header and sending the message to the application layer is called as decapsulation so this words encapsulation decapsulation you can always uh, i think it is very simple also to understand whenever you say, want to send a letter you will put the letter in the envelope isn't it it is like encapsulation at the receiver side whoever opens the letter they remove that envelope they remove the letter from the envelope so that becomes like decapsulation so that is why uh, that is how this encapsulation and decapsulation happens at the uh, encapsulation and decapsulation are the is one of the services provided by the transport layer protocol so these three normally the one which i have written the last okay this can this will be provided definitely by all the transport layer protocols hope the explanation is clear to you all thank you bye bye take care